Saturday, May the 21st, will be remembered as one of the most significant days in the history of the Carlton Football Club. It was the day Carlton played its 962nd and final game at Princess Park, Optus Oval. Princess Park was officially opened on June the 22nd in 1897, when Carlton hosted Collingwood in the first ever match at the venue, and it is the only ground to host AFL matches every season since 1897. The first match was a grand occasion, and the farewell game was also a grand occasion, a fitting tribute to a magnificent ground. This was an emotional day, one that we will all remember. It was a celebration. We all have our favourite memories, and the farewell game provided us with the opportunity to reminisce. For some, it was the end of an association with the ground that goes back over 60 years from what began as a traditional Saturday afternoon ritual rain, hail or shine. The farewell game brought current and former Carlton players, coaches and officials, members and supporters together as one to celebrate and reflect on this wonderful history. For many it was a time to relive the memories that will be forever stuck in our hearts and minds. Memories of a time gone, of suburban football on a Saturday afternoon at Princess Park. As time moves on, it is nice to look back and remember where we have come from. Sit back and enjoy this presentation that marks the end of an era. This is as much about the people who have visited this ground and their stories as it is about the ground and the legends that graced the turf over 109 seasons. It all began some 109 years ago, 22nd of June, 1897. And since that day, it's been 961 games. We embark on 962, and it's the last game that we're ever going to play here for Premiership points. I know a few of you young blokes are anxious here today, and maybe a few of the young boys just thinking about getting the, getting the kick early in proceedings. That's okay. But understand and accept, we've got the hopes of 30,000 members, thousands of other supporters from different creeds, cultures and races who've had their roots in the Carlton area and have followed this club through thick and thin. And think of our supporters, some of them who have been here for decades and followed the club from the times of a Horry Clover to a Harry Ballads to a Bob Chitty to a Bert Deacon to a Ken Hands to a John Nichols. It needs to be a team first operation today can't be anything about individuals. To a man, you go out there today and you commit yourself, regardless of what happens on the scoreboard. You make sure you come off this ground knowing you couldn't have given any more for the Navy Blue Jumper, knowing you've done everything you can. If you do that, you can be proud. We reckon we can win this game. We reckon we can win it if you blokes stick together. Let's get out there now. <laughs> Don't accept 
that what's happening is just a case of all the suffering. Or you'll find that you're joining in the turning away. It's a sin that somehow light is changing to shadow. Shroud over all we have known. All oh, the world, how the ranks have grown. Driven on by a heart of stone. We could find that we're all alone in the dream of the crown. On the wings of the night. I'm impressed with the way they're going about things. I'm impressed with the men behind the club. Same time, they just don't know which way to look. Oh, gee, a Geelong player's gone down behind the play. Oh, Matthews. Matthews goes Alan down. Matthews in the centre. A Geelong player went down. Matthews is down. There is, oh, that's going on everywhere here. playing his 350th game and in my opinion I've been in football a long long time and one of the greatest players I've ever seen. Yes, Bradley, McGrath slips, still Bradley, shot for goal by Bradley, goes all the way, Craig Bradley doesn't miss those. Badly needed goal for the Blues. Come from the back, Steve Kernahan, he flies and takes the mark.
I was probably about 12 or something like that, I guess, the first game that I've been sort of coming pretty consistently for the best part of 40 years. Every big bark, we've been here and involved. We've sat down there behind the goals for years and years and years, and Dad bought us every every week, and we had a bloody ball. So thanks for the memories, guys. Fanatical supporters, mate, I tell you. He's black gear, mate. Bull, <laughs> blood of the club. Right, mean, mean, um, uh, what's your name? Barbs. Barbs, you and Barbs? Had an now tell me, boys, how long have you been coming off the sofa here? 18 years, mate. I'm tell 19. I think well, Carlton's new, newest member. He's only just born nine weeks old. Um, we've been coming here since we were, oh, God, since I could walk. Yeah. Dad used to be able to bring us here and yeah, used to, yeah, and used to put us on milk crates out on the wing there when we used to watch the game. It used to be on the flag. Um, yeah, it used to be a lot of under a cow shed. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's been fast, fantastic. It's um, going to be a sad moment in history, especially with the club. But, um, yeah, it, it'll be a great day. Gee, there are just so many. Um, Jezelenko, uh, Bruce Steele, Kenny Hunter. It's just, it's just a, a movie screen of memories, really. Uh, got a Vakuda, mate, against the Eagles when we got over the line by a point, mate. He just demolished them, and they had probably 20 odd marks. Just destroyed them. And yours? Cooter against um, the Kangaroos in 2000. Yeah? Demolished them, five goals. Uh, 25, 30 years now. Yeah. So uh, I've enjoyed every moment I was here. It'll be a very memorable moment. I've uh, got a, quite a collection now of all the uh, the memorabilia. I've uh, also purchased a new one where it's got the uh, jumper and the picture of the Optus label. I've also purchased the Team of the Century, 
I've also got the Craig Bradley versus Chris Stoll one. Uh, so I've got a, quite a collection at the moment, so all those memories are quite close to me and uh, I appreciate it. Well, it's uh, over 100 years that Carlton have been playing here and uh, it's the end of an era as far as playing and uh, the individuality of this ground is really lost in some of the bigger stadiums, I feel. Um, so it will be sadly missed. It's something special. And Bazaar says Mark was a good mark and we're sitting right behind him here when it happened. Uh, I like the Bradley goal, it was very exciting the way he just kept running and kicked it from the angle. Um, probably the disappointing one was the uh, from Mike Fitzpatrick one. Uh, where Essendon actually unfortunately uh, got the free kick and ended up winning the match after it. So, uh, were you here? Oh, we were here as well. So we've been here for most of all the home games. And uh, yeah, so we've seen a lot of moments, but it's uh, been enjoyable. We used to sit in the old stand, mate. The old legend stand, mate. We can't get this. No, the old legend stand, mate. We don't like the legend stand, mate. The old legend stand, mate. What I miss about the most of the Oval is probably the. And my son, I've got a young 10 year old son who loves having to kick after the game. Uh, he will probably miss the opportunity to play footy after the game. So, probably the big, biggest thing is having to kick after the game because everyone who grows up and likes footy wants to have a kick after watching the football. But I certainly do remember the old uh, press box. It's, uh, uh, Siren stand up there and coming here and standing on a couple of uh, packing boxes to get a good view when I was a bit uh, smaller. Uh, the Zaste mark was a, it was a peeler. Um, so, yeah, Bradley's goal and, and just being here and amongst all the atmosphere was great. It was great. I used to live across the road, so I've been coming here for a long time. But I'd still prefer to be here than the Telstra <laughs> The love and the passion, mate, and one on it's just a lot of battle, mate. It's just all in the heart, mate. Just the passion, the Saturday mornings, Sunday afternoons, mate. It's, just, it's emotional, mate, to see the boys go like this. I'll tell you what the most saddest moment's going to be on Saturday. Uh, go the Packers! Here it goes towards ten and a half fourth for Carlton. Here's Crosswell. He's had a pretty oh, long time so it. far. Crosswell now from a long way out, kicks, he's got it Turning has to go backwards to Bradley. So no easy possessions for Carlton. Kicks back to 50. Kugafidis! Sensational mark! That's his eighth mark.
Um, well, I live in Carlton, so I usually just uh, hopefully not playing footy myself. Otherwise, just wait for the boys to rock up to mine. We walk across here and uh, have a few beers down at the social club, maybe a bit at the TAB, and then uh, grab our seats and watch the game. Don't know. I love coming here for years and years, but I think it's time for a change anyhow. Yeah. I guess just the atmosphere of the place. I mean, you go you go to the footy, and you know it's the same every week in terms of what you're watching and stuff. But I think uh, you know just the atmosphere and the people. It's you know we'll never have this again. So yeah, I guess it's just that old sort of that tradition really that we'll miss the most. Oh, I feel the same way. I think we move forward, not backwards. And it's been sad, it'll be sad, but. Yeah. And apart from your soggy pie, what's what's your favourite off this moment? Oh, what's my favourite when we've won? <laughs> I won a game. <laughs> what do you normally sit? Um, well, we usually sit in the um, flat stand and that, so yeah, on the old wooden seats. Lovely. With our carpet cushions, so yes. Yeah, I think where we've come uh, and won games where nobody expected us to win and some of the young guys coming through have done uh, exceptionally well and I think when some of our team has been injured and the young guys have had to step up and they've really shown uh, true spirit and done well. Can you please welcome Ken Sheldon? But it's, uh, it's a wonderful occasion and it's a launching pad for us going forward, obviously. We, um, it's great to, to see a number of the old faces. You know, the great memories that, uh, that I have of this place include, for example, unravelling of the Premiership uh, flags. Include, for example, training here in September when Frankie Brew had uh, just finished trimming the lawn. Um, you know, he was one of only three curators at that stage that had ever been here at uh, Princess Park Dash Optus Oval. You know, 40 years, 30 years, and Frank had been served for 25. Um, he'd mow the lawns, his nostrils would uh, absolutely soak up that great atmosphere, and we would train here out in front of the, um, the Heatley End stand to crowds such as this. Which number has been worn most often here on Princess Park? And it is indeed number 21. The most games, just coincidentally, played on Princess Park is that actually doesn't belong to a um, Carlton player. So surprise, Michael Tuck. Hand up if you've met the great Jimmy Clark over the years here at Carlton. Jimmy, uh, a wonderful man, and, and uh, I would reckon Jimmy would be 61 at least, Jimmy. Turned 82 months ago. Uh, yeah. Turned 82 months ago, and he's in the audience here this evening. It's been here the longest continuously used ground for AFL football, more so than any other ground. And it's going to be quite sad when we actually close. There's going to be an amazing amount of entertainment that we've organised for everybody on Saturday. We're going to be presenting two of the cups to some of the players who never received a Premiership Cup because the AFL never produced them in those days. So for the 1945 and 1947 Premiership winners, and there are a number of them who are still with us, we will be presenting them that cup on the ground on the day. It's, it's a very sad occasion we're here tonight, but uh, it's great to see all the Carlton folk here. It's, uh, I can tell you some funny stories about this place, I'll tell you now, but I'll have that to the press. Jimmy didn't get three votes out of the ground many times he got him up here. <laughs> It is the greatest club, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. And uh, I've played for 15 years with some of the greatest players and greatest characters and uh, presidents and, and, and staff, the whole thing that, that Carlton was about. And that's why Carlton was so great. They are great from the top to the bottom. I can remember being here before the Hawthorne stand or the Dick Pratt stand now, as it's known, before that was built. Who can forget the game we played? We had the fire break out over yeah. the fire. Collingwood, too. Collingwood? Yeah. yeah. Quite appropriate. <laughs> Yeah.
you've uh, now gone to, if you have a look at this ground, the facilities, if you go to the dock bands, I know people don't want to listen to this and hear that, but that ground is fantastic, and I love it, and go, love going to watch there, and uh, I think the car will be well served when they go there. Thanks very much for your time, guys. I welcome everyone back here. I think it's uh, a fantastic club. Very proud to wear the Carlton jumper, and when Bomb and we went to St Kilda, it was one of the biggest uh, mistakes I've ever made. Uh, <laughs> seriously, this club is fantastic. It's been uh, life for me and my family. Yeah, mate, you said, I think there's so much there to be on him. <laughs> you know, there's no one there, there's no one within 50 metres. And uh, uh, I, Mick Collins turned side on, and there I was, all 67 kilos on me, shit myself, standing next to Mick Collins, my first game of footy. It's about three minutes <laughs> I can send the message out, Jesus, get off the ground, will you? We can't even see you. Well, uh, many a great day here at Carlton, I suppose. To mention one game is, is impossible. But I think what my highlight over my 12 or 13 years here was the third quarters that we used to play here at Optus Oval, particularly coming down to this end. They were something spectacular. Even if you had a kick all day, you just knew somebody would ignite. And uh, I, I think in those days, we were half play entertainers, and I think the crowd expected us to entertain. And I think we entertained to our, to our greatest degree. And I suppose in saying that, uh, my saddest memory of the ground is that I didn't get to say goodbye to everybody. So on the weekend, I get the opportunity to say hello and, and goodbye to uh, the support base that have been so great. Well, I must say that uh, this place is, uh, holds uh, something pretty dear to me. It was, uh, you know, this ground here where uh, I played most of my footy and uh, running around the track. Uh, you see the same places every week, and uh, I still see a lot of the people that uh, used to come and support us here at the, uh, the ground. So it's uh, fantastic to see all your supporters here that uh, have been the heart and soul of this club. The time that I've played, and you're still, you're still involved, so it's great. Um, I've been very, very privileged, actually, um, to play at a great club like Cal, um, to, to be privileged to play in two premierships, to play the likes of Bomber here, Kenny, Alex, Mark, who are just up here, uh, the Bruce Dills of the world. Uh, apart from being champion footballers, they are bloody champion blokes. And uh, if I ever never see another league game, I'll probably be a bit supportive, but it'll, it'll be more supportive if I can see these blokes. He likes coming with his daddy to the football on Saturday afternoon. Unfortunately, we're not going to have that happening at Office Oval anymore. How long have you been coming here? I've been coming here since 1978 was my first game. And what's your favourite Office Oval? My favourite moment probably would be the Bradley goal a few years ago, kicking it on the boundary, banana kick a few years ago. But um, when this little fella came along, I remember taking him um, up the Royal Grey tram, um, sitting on my knee with his Carlton jumper on, it brought a tear to my eye, because I remember doing that when I was a little boy. So. Um, that was a very special moment. I'm glad I've been able to do that before we uh, disappear from this fine ground. Since this fella's um, been on the scene, we um, get up, have some breakfast, jump on the train, get off at Flinders Street and then jump on the number 19 tram and uh, he sits on my knee and up we go and then we walk through the park, I'm going to miss that, um, the leaves, kicking the leaves through Royal Park, Royal Park. you can almost smell off the sofa as you're coming in, uh, it's a very very special feeling and something you couldn't describe to um, any other support I wouldn't think, so we're definitely going to miss it but um, unfortunately progress has to be um, has to go forward and going forward is, is going to the G and the Dome, so we're going to miss it very much.
Di Domenico, five-time Premiership star, Brownlow medalist, and he's in a marquee with many more legends who have worn the navy blue with pride over the years. Good afternoon to you, Robert. Good on you, Rex, and uh, yes. Send me an office in the year for everyone. Yeah, fantastic. Welcome to the marquee of memories at Optus Oval for the one and only AFL match here this season, the farewell game between Carlton and Melbourne. Today we celebrate that final game at the only venue to host games in every season since the foundation of the AFL in 1897. This afternoon we play in the 1277th game. Carlton's 962nd and Melbourne's 124th. No matter what the result, it'll be a day to remember, one of the most historic in football's history. The day, this week of community activities is tinged with a note of sadness, but it's also a time we have to move on. And on behalf of the Carlton board, we are making all of our efforts to ensure that this day is a wonderful day for all the participants. I am sure that each of you have your own special memories and that's what makes the closure of this ground so emotional. For those of us who grew up as kids watching footy in front of the Heatley stand st and standing on beer cans, then moving up into the stand itself, going with your father and friends every Saturday was just part and parcel of your early childhood. My recollection of the fat man selling peanuts. Ah, others remember him too. Kids with, kids with the blankets collecting coins. Or the handwritten blackboard containing the winning lottery ticket number. Are memories I shall personally cherish. Our pre-game activities will be a tribute to the history of the ground and importantly to the success Carlton has enjoyed. This will involve all 16 Carlton Premiership Cups and flags being displayed by past champions and their children. Dual Premiership Captain Mike Fitzpatrick will toss the commemorative coin to start the game. Following the game, Ron Barassi will make the presentation of the Barassi Trophy to the winning captain, and this will be followed by the final play. The Carlton Board had the difficult task of deciding who would officially close our ground. The only name put forward and unanimously endorsed was John Nichols. As a former captain, coach, 300 game player, 
five times best and fairest, he recently had the honour of the Carlton Best and Fairest Award being renamed the John Nichols Medal. We are very proud, John, that you have agreed to represent all of your teammates today, both past and present, on this historic occasion. John played 150 games on this ground over 18 seasons, kicked 121 goals, was captain for seven years, coached for four, played in 23 finals and won three premierships, 68, 70 and 72. Congratulations, John, on being awarded the highest honour that the Carlton Football Club could bestow at this time upon a Carlton legend. Finally, let me welcome the most powerful and influential group of Carlton personalities that has ever been assembled at one time at this ground to watch a game of footy. Past presidents, Mr Ivan Rort, Mr George Harris and Mr John Elliott. Brownlow medal winners. Brownlow medal winners, Mr John James and Mr Greg Williams. Members of the 300 Game Club, coaches and captains of Carlton, including John Nichols, Craig Bradley, Stephen Silvani, Bruce Dool, Ken Hands, Ron Barassi, Sergio Silvani, Peter Jones, David Parkin, Dennis Pagan, Mike Fitzpatrick, Wayne Johnson, Mark McClure, Stephen Kernahan, Brett Ratton, Andrew McKay, and Anthony Kudafides. What an impressive list we have. Very emotional for me, I think. A bit like going to a funeral without the uh, cremation, I think. Um, in the sense that I think Stephen Silvani got it right this morning on behalf of most people. It is uh, home for so many people. I mean, real home because it was family and including the extended family, those who support this club and came here on a weekly basis or a fortnightly basis for so many years. Uh, I uh, have very mixed emotions. I know the times have changed and we've got to go forward, but uh, it will leave a huge hole in a lot of people's lives. I think it will also be a celebration because we, we've had a, an enormous amount of success at this ground and um, been some great sides and some great players played here, both uh, mainly for Carlton but occasionally for other teams. And uh, I, I think. We'll look at it, we'll feel a bit sad, but on the other hand, we'll, we'll look at it and say it, it's been a fantastic experience for Carlton. I don't think all the history will be lost. It'll still be where we train. And um, I also think the MCG and, and Telstra Dome will be good for the club in terms of people being able to go and, and see the teams. And um, so I think th there's a positive side to it as well. But in terms of having played here for a long time and trained here a hell of a lot, um, it's got a lot of great memories. I, I agree with what uh, what Fitzy says. It, whilst it's sad, uh, all I can do is look forward. Uh, we, you know, with our culture and our history, we've uh, not saying uh, a, a few years ago we had the most number of cups, 16. Uh, Essendon have since joined us, but um, there's been so much uh, history going into getting those 16 cups that, uh, you know, everyone thinks how badly we're, we're going in the last... Uh, since we won the flag in 95. But I think there's four other teams going around, uh, including one today, that haven't won for 40, 50 years. So yeah. we aren't all that badly off. Not going too badly. No. In, in the overall scheme of things, John. We, we, we're down, but uh, we've turned the corner. A good board, a good coach, good young kids. Uh, just need that application and uh, we'll be there. You win again, sitting down, 3,000 metre. At 3,000 metre, 3,000, 3,000, finished. Hold on. I'll sell it now, you in one more quickly. Any more bids at $3,000. Sold in front, here we go. Thank you for that, sir. To table number 10. It is such, such an honor to be here. I'm, I've been a Carlton supporter since before I was born, all right? 1970 I was born and I, I celebrated my first uh, premiership in the womb. Easy, I've got the great privilege of, the only thing I remember before is singing a song after the 87 Premiership victory after I was a little bit tired and emotional after a few days. 
and also missing a goal at the MCG after so on against um, Mel. So 250 odd games, that's all I remember for was a terrific effort. <laughs> now, player, the dominator, Wayne Johnston, everyone. Now, yeah, mate, what are your memories of this ground? Oh, they've all been pretty fond ones. Uh, I suppose the highlights in terms of footy uh, were the, uh, the the third quarter time, or the third quarter uh, sort of spills that we'd have, where we kicked eight or nine or ten goals against the Hawthorne side. They were they were great moments. I, I have to say, occasionally to Joe Bailey, I fell in love with sauce that day. <laughs> I fell in love with sticks, brattles, you name it. I just thought this is the most dynamic, athletic, um, entertaining sport that I had ignored for too long. Suburban footy is, is just so important to so many people and I think many of you will shed a quiet tear. My dad was a mad Carlton supporter to the point where it was bordered on sort of neurosis and obsession I think. Like if you changed chairs and Collingwood kicked a goal it was your fault. And so there's all this sort of superstition um, and, and um, so I grew up in a mad Carlton, uh, in a mad Carlton household as well. In 1987, in fact, I got the opportunity to go out onto Princess Park, onto the ground and um, receive a jumper from the club. Um, Sandra, the number one, I got given because I too had a bit of a crush on Stephen Silvani. <laughs> you know, if you grow up with football, you understand passion and history. And um, that's what I, why I chose Carlton from day one. And I said to Dave earlier that they lost that, they won that game, that I, my first game. And I remembered later they actually lost, but they had a great sense of pride. There's, the jumper is outstanding. I, I, you know, I survived the Super League debacle when the Americanisation of, of football Guernseys lost this great sense of history. And, and I just think this, this club epitomises what footy passion is about. So for me, I really wanted to be here all year because I, I don't get here very often. And this is a chance to soak it up and really feel like a genuine fan. Carlton trying to go out in style after a magnificent... Uh History here at Optus Oval, really looking forward to the day this afternoon. Not sure if anyone knows this about John when he was growing up, actually spent three years in uh, grade three. And the only reason he couldn't go to grade four, his dad was still there. Just gives you a bit of an idea of the sort of man that we're dealing with. I'm only being serious, John. Uh, Sam, how are you? Wonderful to see you here, just pinching all your material. How are you going? Is it me? Am I here or? Are you here? What in the hell is serving can tell the difference? You idiot. Can you, can you actually, can you believe it? Dink and believe it, it is unbelievable. Fair dinkum and believable, Sam. Well, I'm going now. Uh, <laughs> Wonderful to see you here. Come up and do the game, I would like to go home. You can go and get pissed with all the Carlton faithful, the ferals out here at Optus Oval, Sam, and uh, piss off, thank you very much. <laughs> Andrew Starton, ladies and gentlemen. Good on you, Andrew. Fair Dinkum, that imbecile, seven years ago, sent a tape into the footy show. He's been taking the piss out of me for the last eight years. Can you believe that? <laughs> Unbelievable. Got him. Here he is. Uh, Gary is. Yeah, look, certainly we were very disappointed with how we played today. Obviously, at the end of the day, what I was trying to instill on my playing group is to get them to follow a process. Outstanding to be here this afternoon. A centimetre perfect crowd here at the President's Function. Great to see you, Ian Collins here in magnificent voice, voice fighting fit. Great to see you, Colo. Outstanding stuff. And you wonder what us commentators get up to in six months in the off-season. This is what I've been working on. Have a listen to this. Geelong's got the ball now. They have a mountain to climb. Ablett Jr.'s got the ball. Stops and props. What can the cat man do? Outstanding. That's the one I've been working on. Shane Warren. I think the greatest bowler we've ever seen and the fact that he has the most text, test wickets would probably suggest that. He's a very good leg spinner, got the flipper, the wrong on the top spinner and an excellent text message. It's a, uh, it's a new delivery that Shane's working on. Apparently it's very difficult to read. Ah, a bit of a joke there from me. Hello and, everyone, uh, terrific to be here this afternoon. Magnificent 962nd game for Carlton here at Optus Oval. The 1277th game of all time. Melbourne looking to upset the apple cart here today. Carlton coming off two disappointing losses, 85 points and 70. Magnificent, a total of 155 points there. Magnificent stuff, an average of 87 and a half. Terrific stuff or something like that. I love my stats. If Sam was here, he could have a go at you. Unfortunately, oh, hello, how are you, sir? Terrific to see you here. Take the sunnies off inside. Well done, Red Nut. It's Lance Whitnell just preparing for the game here this afternoon. Good luck, Lance. All the very best. Today is what it's all about. 
a special day. So many stars, everyone has come here today to witness the last most memorable occasion here at Optus Sobel. I hope you have a terrific day. We'll see you a little bit later for a drink and enjoy the day's festivities. I've been Andrew Stoughton. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, the Carlton Football Club is pleased to welcome you today to what will be the final Australian Football League game to be played here at Optus Oval. The Princess Park Optus Oval farewell game. Carlton and Melbourne, foundation clubs of the AFL, will do battle today for the Ronald Dale Barassi Trophy and the 1,277th game to be played at this magnificent venue. Today, the Carlton Football Club celebrates this great ground tradition of Saturday afternoon football and, in particular, the triumphs of our most proud and successful club. A sad day in many ways for many, but importantly, a day of great memories. Princess Park Optus Oval will forever remain at the home of the Carlton Football Club. The Carlton Football Club and our joint major sponsors, Optus and Dan Murphys, would like to thank you for your support as we celebrate the past and safeguard our future. I'd ask you all now to direct your eyes to the screens around this ground as we celebrate this great occasion.
Six Premiership Cup, carried by dual Carlton Best and Fairest winner and four-time Carlton Premiership player, former Carlton captain Wayne Johnston. It was 1906 and Carlton wins the first VFL Premiership, defeating Fitzroy by 39 points. Please welcome home for the first time the 1907 Premiership Cup. The cup is carried by three-time Carlton Best and Fairest winner. 1995 Carlton Premiership player, former captain of Carlton, Burrett Ratton. They won their second grand final by defeating South Melbourne by five points at the MCG. And now let's welcome home for the first time the 1908 Premiership Cup. The cup is carried by three-time winner of the best and fairest, Jill Carlton Premiership player and former captain, Craig Bradley. The 1908 Jubilee Grand Final celebrated the 50th anniversary of the founding of the game, Carlton winning its third successive premiership. Please welcome home for the first time the 1914 Premiership Cup, carried by Carlton Best and Fairest winner, 1995 Premiership player and Norm Smith medalist, the Brownlow medalist in 1994, Greg Diesel-Williams. The club defeated South Melbourne by five points to bring home the 1914 Cup. Please welcome home for the first time the 1915 Premiership Cup, carried by Jewel Carlton Best and Fairest winner, Jewel Carlton Premiership player and Carlton 300 game player, Stephen Silvani. Now let's welcome home for the first time the 1938 Premiership Cup, carried by Carlton Mess and Ferris winner and three-time Premiership player for the Navy Blues, Jim Buckley. The Blues defeated Collingwood in the grand final of that year by 15 points in front of 97,000 people. It was Sammy Vallance's last game for Carlton. Now let's welcome home for the first time the 1945 Premiership Cup, carried by 1987 Carlton Premiership player, Adrian Gleeson. The Bloodbath Grand Final played right here at Princess Park. Carlton defeated South Melbourne by 28 points. 63,000 people were here. Now let's welcome home for the first time the 1947 Premiership Cup, carried by 1995 Carlton Premiership player, Mill Anna. Freddie Stafford sent that winning goal with just 44 seconds to play. Carlton defeated the Dons by just a point to bring home the 1947 Cup. And please welcome onto the arena in the year of the 60th anniversary of the infamous Bloodbath Grand Final, members of the 1945 Carlton Premiership team, together with members of the 1947 Carlton Premiership team, Ken Hands. Jim Clark, Doug Williams, Fred Stafford, Alan Greenshields, Jack Connolly, and Ray Garvey. Please welcome now onto the ground the 1968 Premiership Cup, carried by Carlton Best and Ferris winner and 1995 Carlton Premiership player, former Carlton captain Andrew McKay. 
Please welcome now onto the ground the 1970 Premiership Cup, carried by the 1987 Carlton Premiership team player, Tommy Alvin. One of the greatest wins of all time. Now let's welcome the 1972 Premiership Cup, brought onto the field by 1995 Carlton Premiership player, Michael Sexton. The Blues defeated the Tigers by 27 points in the highest scoring grand final in history. And now let's welcome the 1979 Premiership Cup, carried by three-time Carlton Premiership player, Alex Marcou. The Blues defeated the Pies by five points. And now let's welcome to the ground the 1981 Premiership Cup, carried by three-time Carlton Premiership player, Ken Sheldon. David Parkin taking over as the coach, defeating Collingwood by 20 points to win the 1981 Grand Final. And now let's welcome the 1982 Premiership Cup, carried by three-time Premiership player, David Glascott. Back-to-back -back flags in 82 with victory over Richmond by 18 points. And now let's welcome out of the ground the 1987 Premiership Cup, carried by Jill Carlton Best and Ferris winner, Jill Carlton Premiership player, and now our Minister for Sport, Justin Madden. Sticks are taken over as captain at just 23 years of age. A wonderful victory over Hawthorne on that very hot day. And now let's welcome the 1995 Premiership Cup, carried by three-time Carlton Best and Ferris winner, Jewel Carlton Premiership captain, the longest serving captain in AFL history, captain of the Carlton team of the 20th century, let's welcome Stephen Carnahan. What a year it was. They lost just two games for the season. Greg Williams won the Norm Smith medal. David Parkin joins John Morrill as a three-time Carlton Premiership coach. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to call upon Ken Hands of the 1945 and Fred Stafford of the 1947 Premiership teams to come forward. And welcome to the stage the acting president of the Carlton Football Club, Mr. Graham Smorgan, to present to the players for the first time the Premiership Cups won by the Carlton teams of 1945 and 1947. And I'm going to ask the other members of the teams to also come forward on this historic occasion.
Receiving now, ladies and gentlemen, the 1945 Premiership Cup. Well done, gentlemen. I'm sure you're glad to get your hands on that magnificent piece of silverware. And now to Fred Stafford and members of the 1947 Premiership side to come forward and to receive their Premiership trophy. Once again, on behalf of the Carlton Football Club, thank you to the past Premiership players for being part of the day and to the fine young women of Carlton representing the great fathers of women of Carlton for unfurling the Premiership flags behind us. Now, the 16 Premiership Cups are going to be taken from the field by the daughters of former greats of the club. We've got Julia Matea and Amy Hunter, Danica Ashman, Shana Reese jones Anna Southby, Annabelle and Sophie McClure, Georgie Austin, son of Rod and Julie. Jody and Jesse Duell, Carly and Narelle Keogh, Amber Klomp, Liz McKay, and Ashley Harms. They're going to escort the Cups off the ground. Thank you for being part of this very historic and special occasion. Very shortly, we'll line the teams up when they come onto the ground for the national anthem to commemorate this final game here at Princess Park of the Zoma. today. It can't be anything about individuals. To a man, you go out there today and you commit yourself, regardless of what happens on the scoreboard. You make sure you come off this ground knowing you couldn't have given any more for the Navy Blue Jumper. Knowing you've done everything you can. If you do that, you can be proud. We reckon we can win this game. We reckon we can win it if you blokes stick together. Let's get out there now. I think was sadness because of the, uh, yeah, it's like a family history here. I think we lived here for so long and so much of our own personal history in the club's history was written here. So I'm one that's uh, not looking forward to the, uh, the last siren here this afternoon. I'm just delighted to be here on a, on a be invited here on a day which has so much meaning for the club and uh, I just hope the team get up and play like we, we know they can. 
How, how long have you been coming up for Serval? Over 50 years. The grandchildren have been coming in for quite a few years. And is this a sad day for you? It is, yes, it is. Have you been sitting in this spot how long for? Oh, for quite a few years. I just yeah. can't remember that. Quite a few years. for the Blues, got a couple of options. Could have gone to Benting, goes longer than that. They want to get it in quick to Favola. Back to Francis, Francis Bruce for the pack. His kick goes straight to Durlu, steps it, goal! Another Carlton goal, this time for Bruce Durlu. That forces the ball forward. Matthews couldn't take the mark. Hunter, magnificent right throughout the day. Who throws it on the boot down towards half forward? Williams in front. His shadow is there. Evans, but Williams beat him. Comes back to the middle. The full forward zone. Punched away by Neil. Grabbed by Jezalinko. Hand pass to Ashman. Cup with the back steam. Turn ahead. He flies.
Josh Betts turned it over. Caparelli, Teague. And that's it. A valiant Carlton in the final turn. They kick six goals, six six for three points. But at the end, the final game at Optus Oval is won by Melbourne. And Jewel Carlton, Premiership coach, Mr. Ron Barassi, to award to the captain of the Melbourne Football Club, David Neitz, the R.D. Barassi Trophy, which was presented at Carlton and Melbourne Games between 1965 and 1972. David, uh, congratulations. Uh, captaining the team that's uh, come through with the goodies today. Uh, I think uh, it would be very hard to look at the scoreboard at the end of each quarter and say that you weren't the best team on the day. But congratulations on receiving this trophy and earning it. Thank you. Yeah, look, uh, thanks, Ron. Um, thanks to our boys who uh, put in a really uh, spirited effort for three quarters, uh, the Blue Boys really uh, took it to us in the last quarter there. And um, look, obviously a big day, a really big day for the Carlton Football Club. And I congratulate the crowd. Uh, a lot of proud moments here in a very proud club. And well done for the crowd for getting out here and really supporting the day. So thank you very much and thank you very much, Ron. Thank you, David. Congratulations to the Melbourne Football Club here this afternoon. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask Carlton captain Anthony Kudafidis move to the centre circle to collect the ball used in the very last game of AFL football here at Princess Park, Optus Oval. <laughs> And now, would you please welcome a Carlton, and indeed an official legend of Australian football, five-time Carlton Best and Ferris winner, three-time Carlton Premiership player, Carlton Premiership coach, and vice-captain of Carlton's team of the 20th century, a man who represents the heart and soul of Carlton, a strong mind in a strong body. Ladies and gentlemen, on this historic moment, the great John Nichol. Ladies and gentlemen, this moment marks the final play in 109 years of history 
at Princess Park, Optus Oval. A journey of memories for everyone. Thank you for being a part of this historic day. decisions that have made this club into one of the great streets of the VFL and the AFL. Understand the great players, the great coaches, people who won more, more than one premiership, people like Warren at the turn of the century, Bentley, Barassi, Parkin. Think of the great administrators. Think of our loyal supporters. All have contributed to what this club's about. It all began some 109 years ago, 22nd of June, 1897. And since that day, there have been 961 games. We embark on 962. And it's the last game that we're ever going to play here for Premiership points. I know a few of you young blokes are anxious here today, and maybe a few of the young boys just thinking about getting the, getting the kick early in proceedings. That's OK. But understand and accept, we've got the hopes of 30,000 members, thousands of other supporters from different creeds, cultures and races who've had their roots in the Carlton area and have followed this club through thick and thin. And think of our supporters, some of them who have been here for decades, 
and followed the club from the times of a Horry Clover to a Harry Ballads to a Bob Chitty to a Bert Deacon to a Ken Hands to a John Nichols to the Silvanis, Stephen and Serge to Jeff Southby, Bruce Stool, Alex Jezelenko to Wayne Johnson, Stephen Kernahan and more recently Greg Williams and Craig Bradley and many others and they will be watching on here today and I'm sure some are looking down on us and they'd love to be out on the ground with you they'd love to be supporting you you 22 players today are very privileged I know I envy you I'd love to be good enough to run out with you blokes here today you carry the, the hopes and the wishes of everybody involved in Carlton we can't get, about, get away from what we're all about here today. Our task is to win a game of football. And we've got to negate Melbourne. We've got to negate their strengths. You know that their usage is good. They're a very efficient side. Their attack's good. They use the football as good as anyone in the competition. Your pressure, your defensive work, your body work has to be at its very best. If you need me to get up and tell you that today, there's something wrong. We need you to be at your ferocious best in terms of your hardness, in terms of your aggression, in terms of your desperation. Centre bounces and ball ups and boundary throw-ins. We don't want the ball out in the open so they can use their skills. We want it in close. We want restarts. We want third man up to advantage. We want to make sure that everybody plays their part. At every stoppage that we play, we crowd and congest and start all over again. Understand the roles that you have to play. Understand when you've got to get back, we have to support our back six. Our women have to get back. Our midfielders get back. If there's one thing we need you to do, it's, to, it's really to support our back six. Make sure you do that today, fellas. We're not going to be chasing their midfielders around and be at their well, whim all day. We want to be accountable. They'll take us to places we don't want to go. We want to make sure that every one of you blokes understands the roles of, uh, of Corey, of Andrew, of uh, Jordan Bannister and Wigger and what they have to do. Fellas, Melbourne aren't a great side defensively. Average 56 entries against. It's very high. It's about 15th in the competition. There's our one chance to take them on, to run, to carry, to protect, to use the angles, have smart forward of centre positioning and make sure every player thinks what he's about. Fellas, we don't really need this after what's happened over the last two weeks to make us at our best. 18 months of hard work just to get somewhere near the top of the water level, to get ahead above water. And the last two weeks, we've fallen apart. We really need to do something about it today. We need to get behind our leaders. We need to tackle fiercely. We need to protect our mates. We need to be backing up all the time. It needs to be a team first operation today. It can't be anything about individuals. To a man, you go out there today and you commit yourself, regardless of what happens on the scoreboard. You make sure you come off this ground knowing you couldn't have given any more for the Navy Blue Jumper. Knowing you've done everything you can. If you do that, you can be proud. We reckon we can win this game. We reckon we can win it if you blokes stick together. Let's get out there now. <laughs>
Carlton kicking to the scoreboard and you standing up, they go. The ball hits the ground, knocked away here. A chance uh, by Crane. Crane kicks forward, here's a go. It bounces, it's about through almost. Yes! Kennedy, opposed to Green, Green did a brilliant lead, there's the siren. Robert Walls is awaited, with him is Wes Lobbs. Be part of history at the farewell game at Optus Oval by voting for your favorite moment in the ground's long and memorable history. You could win two tickets to the AFL Grand Final, plus a framed and signed Prince's Park Optus Oval Memories print. Here are the moments. It was a day the like of which the game had rarely seen. Prince's Park, 1945, Carlton versus South Melbourne. A record crowd of nearly 63,000 crammed in for the grand final, infamously remembered as the bloodbath. Round 18, 
1981. And Peter Buzzasto's spectacular grab against Geelong earns him Mark of the Year. Round 10, 1976. And defending champions North Melbourne had run into a stubborn Carlton. When the final siren sounded, scores were level and Malcolm Blight had the ball in hand. Malcolm Blight, it's a big kick! It's a massive kick! Craig Bradley played 375 games for the Blues. And it was on one late August day in 1994 against the Eagles that he lit up the ground he came to know so well. McKay, back to Bradley. What a goal this would be. Banana kick by Bradley. Oh, oh. Just a kick. A goal. Cast your mind back to April 1996. Carlton against the West Coast. Anthony Kudafidis had to 35 disposals and in doing so produced a game the quality of which Optus Oval has rarely seen. Kuta led the way with 18 marks and the Blues prevailed by a point. <laughs> Through 147 games for the Blues, Ken Hunter was all courage, class and talent. This breathtaking grab against the Tigers judged Mark of the Year for 1983. August 15, 1981. And with the Blues seemingly home against arch-rival Essendon, skipper Mike Fitzpatrick found the ball in his hands as the clock ticked down. Explosively, umpire Ian Robertson decided that Fitzy was wasting time and handed the ball to the Bombers. The rest is history. Of the many champions to have worn the famous navy blue, few share the esteem in which the great Annex Jesselenko is held. But time stood still for a few seconds when Collingwood hard man Stan Magro met Jesselenko with a ferocious hip and shoulder in 1979. Mark McClure was a hard man, courageous, tough, and talented. McNolan was a big man, very, very big. When their paths crossed at Prince's Park, it promised to be a bone-jarring collision for the ages. Stephen Kernan is as revered as any player to have represented Carlton. And in the 1993 Round 3 clash against the Hawks, it was easy to see why. Having failed to clinch the game the previous week against Essendon, Kernahan again found the ball in his mitts as time ticked away in a thriller. His response was typical. Kicks for goal, and he slammed it through, and the Blues hit the front. To enter, SMS your nomination through to 1999-9909, or call 1902-559-909. The Prince's Park, Optus Oval Memories Competition, proudly brought to you by Optus.